Let's go. What does it mean to become a saint? I know you be sipping. Where people gather and... Come, let's eat. Gumbario, oh, my two evenings. Hi. What are you talking about? Right there. Front up. Front up. Hi there. See, it's recent. Hi, this is the fourth episode of Preacher in Blue Jeans, and I'm in the Adoration Chapel of my parish church. A very small. Come here, just visit. This is Jesus over there, the presence of Christ, the one true King of our lives. And just want you to know that that's who we are worshiping, and uh, we live by faith. And uh, I'm whispering because I, you know, don't want to disturb anyone who who's here worshiping the Lord. And I want you to understand something that. Uh, I, I love it here. I love in this small parish church where, 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 where I go to Mass. Uh, when I'm not traveling, when I'm not going to the provinces, or when I'm not going around the world, uh, that's, that's uh, I don't know, I, I love the simple people here, you know, and, and the priests who come here. And You know, wh why is the Mass so special? I'll tell you why. Because, alam mo, pag tayo nagdadasal, inaalay natin kay Lord yung mga, you know, what, what, what we do, our good deeds, our prayers, our words, our music, our attitudes in Lord, and I give it to you. But at Mass, hindi lang yon. When you go to Mass, when you come and celebrate the Eucharist, what happens? You, you allow Jesus to offer Himself. You don't allow Him, but He, <laughs> he does it. You know, you, you join into His sacrifice and His offering. Jesus offers Himself to the Father. And, and the Father, of course, accepts it. And, and you join your life, your offering to the, to the sacrifice of the altar. You, you, you join yourself to Jesus. And isn't that wonderful? That's why the Mass is the highest form of praise. And what a privilege it is to also go before the Blessed Sacrament because in the Blessed Sacrament, the presence of Jesus is there. And you allow Him to conquer your life and to say, Lord God, come and bless me and be the Lord of my life. My dear friends, enjoy this episode of Preacher in Blue Jeans where we meet Jesus every single day of our life in different situations. And even here in the, in the midst of the busy life that we live, there's the Blessed Sacrament. And I'm sure there's a Blessed Sacrament chapel, adoration place, or wherever you are, whether it's near the office or near at home, uh, visit Him and allow Him to be there. When you sell to somebody, the money is in your head, the peso, peso signs will be all over your eyes. That's right. And that's when you don't make the sale. Yeah. But if you're doing things for a purpose that is a lot nobler than just the money itself. Yeah. That's fun. That's fun. See, um, I've, I've done a lot of, like, all of these talks trying to make people believe. People, the people get bumped off with would be hindi kasha rex eh. hindi kasha I don't have enough yeah. and I get to ask people when will it ever be enough it will never be enough that's right and that's up for you to take part of it out because mm. whatever is left you're gonna try and make it enough that's right it will always be enough so as your money or your income grows yeah. still continue setting it aside yeah. yeah and then before you know it what you've set aside can also work for you then the cycle continues you know, switch. I think I remember telling you about that man at work, man and money at work, and yeah. money at work. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is very important. Eh? That's right. Most of the Filipinos, maybe 95%, they're always man at work. Man at work. See, study, grow up, get a job, yeah. have a yeah. family, get that house, try yeah. to get that car, yeah. and then when you retire, that's it. That's it. But if you have this consciousness to save and invest, you yeah. can have man and money at work at a certain stage, and you can really enjoy life because you're not pushed for earning the money. This is stage two. This man stage and two. Man, money at work. Man and money at work. So that you're working yeah. and, and doing what you're trained to do, yeah. adding value to other people, yeah. to businesses. That's right. You earn money doing that, but there is also money on the side that's working for working you. Working for you. After a while, the money on the side grows, what happens? You're not pressured to really look at the money side. No why? And I'll tell you, uh, this is, again, I don't always believe in the benevolence of the speaker, but <laughs> I've worked probably for the last three years not looking at my paycheck. Wow. I never did. Wow. Why? Because it's already ir irrelevant earnings. My money at work is higher than my man at work now. Eh. Wow. 
So Maybe. yeah, I get it in yeah. the ATM. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's deposited in my That's checking right. account. But I'm not gonna be the nitty gritty person who's like going to see like yeah. how much it is, how much the deductions That's were right. out of this, what goes to this. What yeah. this. I'm not gonna look into those details. Because I have money at work, yeah. and maybe, you know, after I get to make an investment decision, ah, meron pa palang natitira sa checking account, I'll use that too. Great. To buy that stock, I'll use that to make that investment. That's but right. I'm not gonna be, you know, too yeah. nitty gritty because money and money at work na ako eh. That's right. But I'd like people to realize those three stages because the dream should be getting into money at work. That's right. So much so that you can really stop working or just doing the things you love. And that's the reason why, you know, I admire people in the U.S. who at a certain stage in their lives just become philanthropic. You know, from from success, you really switch, switch this to significance. That's right. Diba? That's For right. now, at my age, I'm still looking at more success. But I still see that side of me that says, has to be significance later. You never become... A person of legacy with only success. That's right. I mean, how wow. have you contributed? Yeah. You in the last time we talked about you were also it was a hilarious example you gave on, on the law talk. Can you just share that again <laughs> a little bit? Okay. A lot of people and this I saw again and I I remember telling you that. But I saw it when the lotto hit a jackpot of 140 to 170. Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere I go where there's a lotto terminal My gosh, there's a line. Right. That's right. right. There's a line. I was telling somebody who was riding with me in the car, look at what's happening here. Yeah. These guys are thinking, this is the time to hit that jackpot. <laughs> right? Yeah. And many of them are already thinking to themselves, what will I do the money with, with the money in case I win? My gosh. So it's more like planning for something that's not bound to happen. Why? I mean, do the math. Lotto is like hitting that jackpot. Yeah. Again, 1 over 5.3 million. One okay. over 5.3 million. Okay. That's the odds. That's <laughs> okay, if that doesn't sound too absurd, let me tell you the picturesque way, how, how I describe it. Okay. How I describe that is the odds of getting hit by lightning twice on the same spot. On the same spot. That, that is how bad it is. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. so, Bo, how old are you? I'm going to ask you how old you 39. are. Have you been hit with, with, with lightning? Not yet. Not yet. Because if you get hit, stay there because you have to get hit a second time. <laughs> That is the, the odds. Those are the odds of hitting the jackpot. Now, you look at our countrymen, instead of like really saving, setting aside money, yeah. they bet on chance. That's right. So you're actually projecting your future based on chance. It's largely culture based and that's the reason why, you know, when I when I look at like and that's where you have to deal with this on a very spiritual level because a lot of people will say you know that probably might be that might be what God wants for me. Mm. That might, I mean that's a defeatist way of looking. That's at it. right. You see, it's it's all that kapalaran and yes. desti, destiny thing. Yes. You see, as far as I'm concerned, God gives you the freedom to decide it. Oh, He'll probably know what will happen. Yeah. But you still have the freedom yes, to decide. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So in my case, I'll probably say, do you like? Do, would you like to live your life based on chance? Yes. Or do you like? to build the building blocks wow. that will be the foundation of That's real right. wealth. So I was telling my driver, you see, the 10 pesos, 20 pesos in my pocket is secure than the 10 pesos getting into that lotto. Yes. Because I'll probably do lotto. I haven't done it, yeah. actually. I yeah. haven't. I, I, I take pride in saying that I haven't bet my money yeah. on the lotto. That's great. If I want to do charity, I do charity directly. Yes. You know, a lot of people bet and they say, pag natalo, charity. Mm. Hindi ganun ang charity. Eh, charity, <laughs> you have to do charity. <laughs> as charity itself yes. and when you're trying to win a jackpot that's investing <laughs> why? people in the US who buy lotto tickets so clients sa supermarket eh. uh-huh. okay and you just think about yes. you know, ayoko na lang tanggapin yeah. yung sukli churn me a lotto ticket yeah. then the ma- machine gives yes. you a lotto ticket in the Philippines it's very different in the Philippines people line up people have a sheet of paper inalagaan na niya ng tatlong taon yung numero yun eh. so investment na yun Investment him because he's trying to save 10 to 20 pesos a week. Yeah. Betting on that set of numbers, That's hoping right. to make a withdrawal one day. Ooh. And because of the odds, obviously, more but, than 99.9% but, yeah. are not going to have that withdrawal. No, they won't. No, they won't. And then you, you hear these stories like the guy who won 
this recent uh, lotto mm -hmm. winner was uh, magsasaka and then some people say kind of like have hopes it's you know? the emancipation yeah you see and 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 for that reason i get to compare ourselves with with like more progressive nations now like thailand you know? yes a lot of people think it's just simply education no it's a mindset shift mindset shift the mindset shift that future your life your destiny is in your hands wow that is the mindset shift because as far as we're concerned and we even song we we even have songs that go like kapalaran di ba yeah, yung destiny yeah, yeah. yung parang ay kung talaga pa lang nakasulat na sa palad ko ang that's future right, ko that's I'll right i'll probably sleep now because i'm going to be rich if my pan yeah, says that yeah, right yeah. it's too defeatist no it's it's terrible it's terrible yeah, i was just uh, you know going back to that li thing on culture and then our religion like like i i love your theology uh, that your theology is e more sound than many priests I know. Or, and, and, and imagine, you know, you don't have a theological background, but you have business, you have finance, and, but, but your touch of the real world has given you that great theology. Oh, yeah, because as I've said, I mean, going back to Catholic school, somehow when I was, like, looking at the way people present it, you cannot help but be cynical. Like, for example, there are, and I can remember this off the cuff, like, yeah. it will be easier for a camel to get through the eye of the needle, needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Okay. I put that in my head, yeah. and there's my, there's a different interpretation to that that's more empowering than simply saying it's only the poor who go to heaven. Yeah. You see, when, when I'm getting taught in the wrong way, I said, wow, this is good. Yeah. I need to change churches. You know, it's <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather go somewhere where getting rich is okay as long as you have the right means. Yes. Why? Yeah. Because of purpose. When I get rich, there are people I help. Yes. When I get rich, I can look back and, and, and see how I can make a difference for others. That's right. You see? So... As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing wrong with that. And then, if I have the talent and I can harness it, why not? Right? So, clearly, it's not only getting rich, but also providing a template for people. Hey, follow this track because it works. That's right. I can tell you. I mean, I'm still young. Yep. My parents, my dad's still there, still alive. My mom just died about mm. two, three years ago. Mm. But they lived in my house for the past... 12 years Wow! because my mom got hit with a stroke and I asked yeah. them to move to my place because uh -huh. in Magallanes, you know, they won't get hit by a jeepney yeah. as they are living in San Paolo. But what am I pushing? I'm pushing the idea that, hey, I'm not getting any inheritance. I work for the money I have. That's right. I never really got anything from anybody that says, okay, Rex, this is your capital. Yeah. Wala akong ganun. Wala. Okay? I started working with... A company that paid me 1,800 a month. <laughs> Everybody starts off that way. Yeah. The reason why I'm energized to tell people these stories is because, hey, you can do it. That's right. Anybody can do it. That's right. It's, number one, discipline. It's number two, getting really grounded with your purpose. Because very important to me is purpose. Eh? Because yeah. if you're just looking for money, it's going to be very, very half-baked. Yes. Um, maybe you can be successful, but it's going to be short-lived. Yes. Because as long as you don't have a sense of that purpose, you're not going to be grounded. If you're not grounded, you'll do the wrong things. Mm. That's as far as I'm concerned. What, very, very important. What is your purpose, Rex? Make that difference. I feel that I have a way of linking up with people that can move them. Uh, this morning, I was just on radio. I was trying to tell them about earmarking savings for the future. I have probably, like... I don't know, maybe the gift of gab, you know? I, I talk well. I know that. People tell me, and I say thank you. I'm not going to be very, very humble about it. Absolutely. I know. Absolutely. I know. But I use that not to con people into something. I use that to, to teach and educate. Yes. I uh, have taught in the Graduate School of Business of De La Salle for a long, long period. Wow. And then the money they gave me probably will be gasoline money. But <laughs> it's a matter of throwing back. Yeah. You know, getting yeah. into the young guys, breeding that kind of idealism. That's right. Making a difference for me is in the influence side. I know I'm a good influencer. I know I'm a good speaker. Yes. But somebody has done this psychological exam on me, which is very, very enlightening. Uh huh. Once pay is a scale of one to ten. 
and cost motivated is another scale of 1 to 10 so if you're going to be looking at the full spectrum that's 20 okay on once more pay I'm only rated a 4 as of this stage okay but cost motivation is a full 10 <laughs> so what are they telling me they're telling me that hey you'd rather believe the purpose than the money it brings okay but you know okay. what I tell them yeah hey that brings the real money see sometimes the Filipino also has to make a distinction as to luxury and necessity yes because if you feel that luxury is a real real one yeah you'll begin to wake up one morning making it a real real need mm. that's when it changes yes okay my Chinese influence is very very strong I studied in AIM I happen to have a bunch of Chinese roommates wow. who practically alam yun, parang tinirisk nila yung pagka Pinoy ko in terms of handling money Galing. and they're saying yeah. you know about you know when we were I, I remember dealing with this topic once uh, debt yeah. uh, and we were talking about all the kinds of debt risks and yeah. things like that when we went up to the room my roommate pulls me back and tells me that that's not real <laughs> that's the technical side of the financial Really? For us Chinese, there yes. are only two kinds of debt. Uh -huh. Good debt and bad debt. Yeah. Good debt is when you borrow to earn money from it. That's right. Bad debt is when you borrow to enjoy something today. That's something you cannot afford. Yeah. November 5, Sunday. First reading, Deuteronomy 6, verse 2 to 6. Father God, I ask you that you come and speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. So that you and your son and your grandson may fear the Lord your God and keep throughout the days of your lives all the statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you and thus have long life. Hear then, O Israel, and be careful to observe them that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your strength, with all your heart, and with all your might. Take to heart these words which I enjoin to you today, the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 23 to 28. Those priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But he, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always above to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher from the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, first by his own sins and for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests, but the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. From the Gospel of Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to 34. One of the scribes, when he came forward and heard them disputing, and saw how well he had answered them, asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There, there is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, uh, and, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw, he answered with understanding. He said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ibang klase, no? The essence and the centrality of love sa ating pananampalataya. It's really love, you know, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. I mean, it is love. It is who we are. It is our identity. It is our mission. It is what will, you know, when we go before judgment day, God will not ask all sorts of questions on whether we did this, you know, minute law, whether we did that little law. He will ask us whether we lived our whole lives based on love. 
and that if we did follow those laws, uh, those minute small laws, it should be because you loved. Minsan, nakakapagtaka na, you know, you first reading in yung gospel, isa, di ba? It's, it's all about love. Because when, when you think about our, I don't know, you know, you read the Old Testament and you see that parang ang daming mga, mga images doon na si Lord, ano, matapang, masungit, at malupit. God is a God who, a God of vengeance. He's a God who gets his hammer and, and, and he, he destroys people. He annihilates them. Bakit ganun? Ba't ganun si Lord? Hindi ba? And then you, you move to the New Testament. Uy, yan, yan si Lord. You know, he goes, uh, there's an adulterous woman in front of him and Jesus said, cast the first stone. He who has uh, not committed uh, any, any, any sin. Yun si Lord, you know, but, but we say, why is the Old Testament like that? A God of vengeance, a God of harshness, a God of cruelty. It's not that God changed. It's that, it's that our perception of God changed. And so we have to read the Bible. We have to read the Bible as a journey. Okay? It's a journey. It's a journey of faith where people try to understand the will of God. People try to understand who God is. And then because of, of our limitations and our weakness, maliit lang yung, yung naintindihan natin kay Lord. And so during the Old Testament, they, they could only understand the justice side. And, and they interpreted God in their own limitations. But you, you find out later on as, as our faith grew, uh, we began to understand how incredibly loving He is. And that the essence of who he is is love. But you find na pero na, nandun na rin yun, no? sa Old Testament you find that the greatest commandment is love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor. I speak to you, my dear friends, uh, through the preacher in blue jeans uh, TV show to invite you to make your life like the God that we worship. Ang pinakamahalaga sa kanya pag-ibig at dapat yun ang pinakamahalaga sa buhay mo. Hindi pera. Hindi achievements sa buhay, hindi uh, palakpak ng tao, hindi fame. Pero pag-ibig, puno ba ng pag-ibig ang buhay mo? I know that you're going through some problems. I know that you're going through some challenges. And I ask you now, come, let's have faith. Let's trust in God. Surrender mo yat yung mga problema mo sa Panginoon na nagmamahal sa'yo. Can we pray together? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hold, hold my hand in faith. And believe that God is here and believe that God is with you right now. And just say this with me. Jesus, I surrender my problems to you. And I pray, Father God, that you would give me a happy life. Lord, sa gitna ng mga problema, sa gitna ng mga sakit, sa gitna ng mga, mga, mga unos sa buhay, bagyo sa buhay, hinihiling ko, Panginoon, be the God of peace. Come, Lord, and proclaim peace to my life. Lord God, rescue me. Deliver me from my problem. Be the solution to my problem. Be my healing. Lord Jesus, come. And I pray, Father God, for your love to come to my life. In Jesus' name. Father God, come and bless me now. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your miracles. Thank you that I have hope that my life will be blessed by you. And yes, Lord, fill my life with love. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It was a, just a wonderful time being with you here in the, in, the, in, in the preacher in blue jeans. And you know what? As we go along, the, today was, was church. Why? Kasi bahagi ng buhay natin yung simbahan. I'm in the garden of my parish church. A while ago, we were in, we were in the Adoration Chapel. You know, preacher in blue jeans, dapat ano yan, eh, dun, sa, dun tayo sa kalye, dun tayo sa bahay ko, dun tayo sa palengke, dun tayo sa mall. Pero bakit hindi sa simbahan? Kasi it's part of our lives. It's part of loving God. With all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving our neighbor. Enjoy. See you tomorrow.